Welcome back. I'm talking with Ben Emlyn Jones about some of his areas of research, and one of these is you have followed the work of Kevin Annett, who mm. is Canadian, I believe. Yes. Now, uh, I've covered very briefly on this show uh, instances of uh, child abuse, in particular the Holly Gregg case, and what a lot of people don't realise is, I think, the subject of paedophilia. If you if you read the mainstream press, the mainstream view is that it's like men who stand on street corners looking at kids in parks who are who are these paedophiles who were you know that they're they're basically misfits or what have you rather than there being some carefully organized orchestrated paedophile rings that include people in very high places such as judges and senior police officers social workers and the list goes on and on and on and, and uh, this is something which a lot of researchers are trying to expose Mm. Uh, in, p in particular, Kevin Annett. Yeah. Uh, just tell us about who Kevin Annett is and what he's about. Uh, Kevin Annett, um, uh, Reverend Kevin Annett, as he was, was a vicar. He was vicar in the United Church of Canada, and he was the local vicar of a village called Port Alberni in British Columbia. Um, now, he took up the position as a young priest in this church, and um, parishioners kept, came, came up to him and... Um, talk to him, you know, during, after the service, and among them were the Indians. Now, and these Indians started telling him some very disturbing stories. It's important to, to realise that Canada, like Britain and most other countries, has laws where you have to send children to school. And Canada set up a system run by the churches called the residential school system, which, and this operated between 1890 and 1992. The residential schools were very similar to English boarding schools, except um, they were, what they did was they were there to supposedly educate the children of the remote Indian tribes. Um, now what these, uh, what these Indians were saying, these Indians who attended these residential schools as children were telling Kevin Annett, was that basically half the children who went into those schools never came out. The ones that did come out were telling him stories of torture, murder, medical experiments, sexual abuse, and almost, almost every atrocity you can imagine being committed against very s small children. And um, Kevin immediately began making inquiries in the church because a lot of these residential schools, as I say, were run by his own church. Others were run by the Church of England, the Catholic Church. Lots of different denominations were involved in it. The moment he um, started making these inquiries, he was stonewalled. He, he received no reply about it at all. And that what followed then was actually a story that's quite similar to my own when I was drummed out of my job. Um, the bishops and, and everyone else in the church authorities kept coming to him and saying they'd received complaints about completely unrelated matters. Mm -hmm. And um, he was basically put through a disciplinary procedure. And he describes this in great detail in his book, um, he's written a book called Unrepentant, and he's, there's a film called Unrepentant as well, which is you can watch free online. It's a feature-length documentary about this, but keep a box of tissues handy because it's very disturbing and very upsetting indeed. Right. Um, Kevin was, what happened then was Kevin was basically sacked. He was defrocked from the church and sacked and sent packing, basically. His wife was paid by the church to divorce him. He's, he's, some of his children he's not seen for years. Um, he's basically been put through sheer hell as, as a result of making these inquiries. Right. Um, he's stuck by, but he's stuck by his guns. Um, he has um, very bravely stood up to these people, and I've got a lot of admiration for him. That's why there's no excuse for me not to do it. Um, and, and he's currently travelling the world lecturing on various issues. He, he's been in Britain a couple of times, although uh, twice actually he's, he's visited this country. The second time, unfortunately, he was arrested and by immigration and sent back. So um, what was the reason for that? They, they come up with some, I can't remember exactly, it was some trumped up excuse, but um, he was, he was going to speak at a, at a public meeting at Trafalgar Square in London and um, they basically sent him back in. Um, mm. I can't remember the actual details, but everything is available to be seen on his website, Hidden From History. Mm -hmm. And he's a, he's a good man, he's a good friend, and I respect him deeply, and so, I'll do everything I can to assist him. Uh, I, I, I'm led to believe that there's some British involvement in, in, in what was going on in these uh, communities in Canada. Is that... Yeah, there's a, so there's just tell us about that. Yeah, there's an involvement. The government know about it. 
the corporations know about it, and what's more, the British the royal, government know about it. Um, well, yes, I mean the, the British government and Canadian government are linked. The Canadian is a British Commonwealth country, and the Queen is, of course, head of state in Canada, and the Queen is actually personally accused but, in, in Kevin's work. Right, but by, by who? By Kevin Annett? By Kevin, yeah. In, I can't remember if it's a book or in a film or somewhere else, or maybe one of his lectures, but he mentions an incident that happened in the 1950s, soon after the coronation, in which the Queen and Prince Philip turned up at one of these residential schools. This was reported to him by so, one of so the... So what, what year does he claim this happened? I can't remember. Sometime in the 1950s, I think. Okay, so it's not long after the coronation. Yeah, then. when she was new, the new Queen. Um, one of the Indian witnesses has said to Kevin that the Queen and Prince Philip turned up at one of these schools and left with a few of the children in their company, and those children were never seen again. Right. Um, now, this, is, uh, this fits in with what other people have come forward and said. There are other witnesses who have reported that about the royal family and people in government being involved in the abuse of children. Right. S such as satanic ritual right, abuse. Okay. So he alleges <laughs> that the, the, the Queen and Prince Philip took some children that were never seen again. That's, that's his, yeah. his, his, Kevin Annett's, what he alleges. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't allege any abuse, is that? Um, well, he, not, he, doesn't, um, he doesn't have any evidence to know what, what happened to these children right. afterwards. But the unfortunate truth is we can, we can um, probably anticipate that those children were, in fact, killed, in, possibly in some form of satanic ritual abuse. Yeah, but we don't know that, Ben. No, I mean, uh, we don't. Th that, um, yeah, th there's no, there's no physical evidence of that that that, that, that happened. But no. th you know, people do make claims about the royal family being involved in dodgy activities, yeah. shall we say? But yeah. is there any actual evidence of it? Well, in terms of the, the royal family, no. But what happened at the schools, there is evidence, not just eyewitness testimony, but Kevin is archaeological evidence now. Kevin has found bones and teeth. And there's several, and there's, some of this is actually filmed in in the, in the unrepentant movie, right. okay. where he's basically some because thankfully these schools are closed down now, and the last right. one closed in 1992. Some of them are in ruins, and he's been digging in the ruins. Right. And in the basement, they found bones of children. Right. Which um, there's, why would they be there? Why would there be so many bones of children in the basement of a school? Right. So is he considered some kind of uh, threat w when he comes to this country to the establishment? Or very much so. I mean, you can imagine. So just expand on that. Well, I mean, what, other than the fact that the Queen and Prince Philip visited in the 1950s, and he's claiming that two children went missing. Other than that, what, how does it link to to, to Britain? I mean, are there other people implicated? Um, the, the, the way it links to Britain, I think, is because there are very similar stories coming out from um, institutions in this country. Um, I mean, I don't think it's, it's quite on the same scale, but I mean, if you only have to listen to people like Brian Gerrish or Bill Maloney and um, the Holly Gregg affair, and you realise that the institutional abuse of children is a, is a very, very serious problem in this country too. I mean, we're far from being some guy in a raincoat on a street corner. Mm -hmm. The person most likely to rape, abuse and kill your child is someone you hand them over to in a social worker's office or in hospital or at a school. Mm -hmm. and, and this, obviously, this is one, this, I think this is included among, like the UFO issue, it's one of the bigger than bigger secrets. It's one that cannot be told or cannot be mm -hmm. revealed without such destructive implications that the government would never survive and the society we know it would uh, not function. If you are um, brought into or you become part of the paedophile ring, then you are, your, your silence is guaranteed because mm. the, you know, they're, they're, you, you're, part, you're part of that criminal ring, if you like, mm. so you're not going to speak about other people. So it's kind of a, a self-protecting unit. Yeah. And it's, I mean, do you think that, what do you think the ultimate, what's ultimately going on, going on why allegedly certain people of the elite are carrying out these kind of activities? Well, what is, to tell you the truth, I, I'm not sure exactly why they're doing this to children. One of those could be to mind control the next generation or to in some way change the next generation of humanity. There's also the allegation is that the aristocracy, the aristocratic um, um, bloodlines of Europe as and the elite, elite bloodlines of the United States and the New World, which, you know, laid up into the Illuminati, are into the occult, black magic, 
satanic ritual. Right. Um, either way, I mean, it's either, either if either or probably both of those explanations is true. I mm -hmm. think, and either way, it's a horrific uh, and mm -hmm. one of the most saddest and most uh, tragic things of this that could happen on this world, and it does need to be exposed. And people like Kevin are doing a lot to expose it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he is now expanding his work into all kinds of areas, he's exposing corruption. For instance, he's he's he wants to arrest the Pope. Right. Um, for uh, abuse of children and things like that. He's part of this movement to arrest the Pope. So does he claim that the, that the Pope has personally abused children? I don't know if he personally accused that man as an individual, but the man, I think he's an accomplice to child abuse. He knows what's going on. Uh -huh. And um, in fact, he's the head of the institution, the, one of the biggest institutions perpetrating it. And he, uh, in other words, I mean, if this was a police investigation, he would have been arrested long ago and charged. And, the, Pope, the Pope? Yes. Uh -huh. You know, if this was, for instance, any other organisation, you'd think, you know, the police, why aren't the police going in and, and talking to him? Because he's the Pope. Yeah. He's, he seems to, he's immune, you know, yeah. he's above all that. Yeah, you know. yeah so Kevin, Kevin Annett, has he had similar treatment to Robert Greene then? Has, uh, has he been arrested at all or put on trial the way that we've seen with Robert Greene over trumped up charges? Uh, not yet. He's been arrested several times. I'm, I'm, I don't think he's faced any official criminal charges yet. Right. But um, he's basically, the authorities always have their eye on him and they're always working to, to, to bring him down. Mm -hmm. I think they're trying, a lot of this pressure put on him is maybe simply to harass him and harass him to keep him focused and to keep him downtrodden. All right, Ben, well, um, that's pretty disturbing stuff. Very. W w where, where can people see Kevin Annett's film? Just, just give, me the, give me the name of the film. So right. The film's know. called Unrepentant. Unrepentant. And if, you, if you put that in the Google video, you'll get it. It's a hour and 40 minute long feature length documentary um, which is one of the most upsetting and disturbing films you're likely to see however there's, there's one thing that's more would be more upsetting and disturbing if it wasn't there and people weren't talking about it and it wasn't getting exposed so, so it's right definitely then. lesser two evils okay then Ben. well thanks for um sharing your thoughts with me thanks, today Richard. and uh, again good luck with your blog website thank you and it just remains for me to say, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I am Richard D. Hall. Good night.